my one. Welcome back to one of my tour review videos. In this video, we're going to be talking about the Banks 28 degree framing nailer. Alright, so first, let me unplug it. Just gotta fire after you're done with it, just in case. Alright, so here we have the Banks framing nailer. It's actually my first time using a nail gun. And there are many reasons why we got this nail gun. As you saw, we were working on a sheaving job for our uh, sunroom. And if you haven't checked our videos on converting our patio to a sunroom, you should totally do that. The reason that we got this is because my mom was complaining about my dad when, when he was nailing the framing in, that his hammer, his, hammer, his hammer impacts kept shaking the house. So because of that, my dad used my mom's uh, complaints as an excuse to buy a new tool. He also just likes getting new tools in general. My dad really, is a really big fan of cordless tools, like these ones. He is a big fan of them. However, in terms of nail guns, nail guns are pretty much one use. Like, this is a framing nailer. There are specific nailers for uh, roofing, for siding. So, this is for a framing job, so it's pretty much one use for us. So it's not a good idea to get a really expensive one, just one that suits our needs. Uh, and cordless nailers are really expensive. Like, I think the ones that my dad was looking at was around $200. But the pneumatic ones my dad was also looking at were about way cheaper than that. This one was um, $90 at, at Harbor Freight, and he got a 20% off coupon, which made it about $75. And we thought, well, we already have a pneumatic air compressor, so we might as well get the pneumatic nail gun. Alright, so enough talk. Uh, actually, a lot of people complain that in my videos I talk too much, especially even in review videos where you kind of need to talk about the product. So here's the box. You can see that there are many features of the uh, nail gun in it. But first, we're going to do the demo because that's what people really want. So first I have to put my glasses back on and then I need to connect the hose to it. Probably not a good idea to do it on the glass table. There we go. As always, when you first connect your nail gun to a hose, oh my God. these uh, glasses are a bit hard. You always want to dry fire it into a block of wood, a scrap piece of wood. So, as you can see, that's what it looks like when you drive a nail into a scrap piece of wood using a nail gun. God, I might not use these. I have glasses on already, but yeah, safety glasses are really important, especially for nail guns. Nail guns are really dangerous. The thing is, with my glasses already on, I fear they might be more of a safety hazard than a, a safety glasses. So, just a safety demo. Alright, just as one more demo. That's what it looks like. And, I guess we're done with the demo. Let's get back to talking. Okay, so, here we go. This is the front side view, or the uh, back side view. And this is the front side view. So there are many features to look at here. First off is the uh, magazine. Uh, okay, I'm not holding it. So it's a good idea to stand in front of the banner. So this is how you load the, the, uh, the nail magazines. In order to do that, first you take a magazine. This nail, uh, this nail gun can hold, I think 70 nails max. Let's see. 70 uh, nail capacity and in order to load them you load them from the bottom it goes through this little uh cutout right here with the heads at the top and you want to make sure it's at the same angle as the magazine first you put it through then you want to press down this lever right here all right so the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to pull this lever back by pressing down on it and then pulling it back and then letting go of it and then pushing it but there's also the other method, which my dad uses, is that you just push it through, then move this back, and then let go. Pretty easy, right? So talking about the magazines themselves, they are two inches deep, 
they are held together by this metal strip and they're at a 28 degree angle and this is important because this is a 28 degree fastener angle which means that if you have a magazine that's 30 degree angle or a 20 degree angle they have different angles that's not gonna be you're not gonna be able to use it in this uh nail gun and according to my dad that's why this nail gun is cheap because you can't adjust its angle to fit other magazines so once again this uses a 28 degree magazine angle more on the nails they actually do have to be connected by a strip uh, which is called a uh, wire weld now some other magazines might be connected by a paper or a sheet of plastic these ones are connected by a wire weld and this framing nailer can only use this type of uh, connection it can't use paper or plastic the range of lengths that the nails can be are two inches to three and a half inches and you can actually see on the bottom of the loader that it should be able to fit about three and a half inches long uh, nails and they can either be full head or equipped head and as you can see from our nails they're full head not clipped all right so talking about the features first off this uh, you can adjust the depth of your drive which if you look at the nail gun really closely right here there's a diagram that shows that you can adjust how deep the nail goes in in order to do that you twist this knob right here i'm not going to tamper with it too much but if you want to if you want to make go it if you want to make it go deeper you turn it clockwise if you want to make it go uh, less deep counterclockwise i'm not going to tamper with it too much because we already have it calibrated to the setting that we need and if you're using a framing nailer you probably already know what setting you need to use or how to calibrate it so you also have another feature which is you can adjust the way that you trigger the uh, nails or that you trigger the action there is sequential or contact activation and you can see the diagram for that above the trigger this is sequential and this is contact so when it's sequential in order to activate the uh, nail gun you have to first press the uh, the head down it's a glass table I just realized and then you press the trigger and then a nail comes out but with contact action you can see hold on let me do it one more time so you didn't, if you didn't catch that when you do contact action you can see that the trigger gets pulled back and what's gonna happen is that all you need to do to trigger the nail gun is to actually press the uh, head down okay it's not actually plugged into anything so it should be okay and then let's keep going so I actually heard from most people that contact activation is not something you'll need regularly for a nail gun. Even professional builders I've heard say like it's, it's quite dangerous and sometimes it's imprecise to use a contact activation. So you're better off just using single activation because it won't save you much time. And also because my dad says it's more safe to use single activation because it's precise and you can and you're less likely to uh, make a mistake when you're doing single fire. And, he, should, and he, he actually says that it's less, it's more dangerous than a gun, a real gun, because, you know, he's a marksman, so he, he knows from experience how dangerous these things are. But he wants me to stress, and I agree with him, that he was a marksman about 40 years ago, so back in the 1980s, so he hasn't fired a gun recently, and definitely not when he's had kids. So, well, maybe he might do it soon, he might take me to a range and we might do a video there. Uh, we'll see but I just want to say to reaffirm that he said that nail guns are more dangerous than actual guns uh, obviously don't take that out of context uh, I'm just want, I'm just saying that to stress that nail guns can be very dangerous so taking a look at the actual nails you can see that they actually look like they got in pretty well so this is how they're supposed to look when they go in these are mine so you can see that when I did my first one, it didn't go in all the way. And I think that's because I didn't hold it in all the way. So the depth, it didn't go as deep. This one is actually pretty good. It goes all the way in, it's flush. And this one's a bit closer, but not entirely flush. So I need to, when you have something like that, you have to hammer it in further. If it's not as deep, you need to knock it in with a hammer. But as you can see, uh, the ones that my dad did, they look pretty good. And we also had these marked out so that I could try hitting the X's. At the top, I wasn't very precise, but I got a bit better. 
Uh, as you get, as you use the nail gun more, you're gonna get a bit better sense of where the nail's gonna actually go. Because if you look from the top, there's not really a way to like measure where exactly the nail will go. As you use it, you'll get a sense. So when my dad first got the nail gun, he had to do some test runs to see if the gun worked properly. And this is what they look like. Now, what I want you to notice here specifically are the shots in which it looks like there are double nails. There are two nails firing at the same time. Like these ones, like this one, this one, and this one. And at first, when my dad encountered this problem, he thought there was something wrong with the nail gun. So he looked online to find out what the source of the problem might be. And according to what he found, there, there are many things that they, they commented like, maybe it's the way that you're firing your nails. But one thing intriguing he found was the air compressor. Uh, right now, the compressor is sitting at a 95, degree, uh, 95 PSI. Its maximum is 120 PSI and its minimum is 90 PSI. What's happening is that when it gets down to 90 PSI, the compressor will restart and get some more air in and then go back to 120 PSI. So when he first hooked it up to the nail gun, he would start it up at 120, uh, 120 PSI and that's, that's what caused the double head nails. When you had it at a, a high PSI, these, these uh, double nails started occurring. But when he got down to like 100 or 190, then the, the double nails didn't happen. So what he did was, per the recommendations of the internet, he bought this regulator, which set the, which set the PSI to a constant 85 PSI. Which, if you, no matter if you're at 120 PSI or 90 PSI, this is always gonna be outputting 85 PSI. It's always gonna be constant. Of course, this regulator is adjustable for, um, for any uh, PSI, maybe 70, maybe 100. But it's important that you do not set it below 70 because the nailer only takes 70 to 100, 120 PSI. And obviously you don't, you don't wanna go above 120 PSI or you'll encounter these double nails. We'll put the link to the regulator in the description if you wanna buy it. But that's why you need a regulator so that your nail gun is consistent. Obviously if it's, if it's above 120 PSI, it might explode. So that's another reason you don't want to go above 120. Another thing is that when my dad first got this, he was a bit new to maintaining a nail gun. Obviously, like none of my people in my family have seen a nail gun before, except for maybe my dad. So the first thing he did was put the nail, the, the oil in. So because he was new to this, he only put five to 10, which is what about what you're supposed to. Uh, and you're supposed to do this like every day, by the way, five to 10 drops every day. And the oil is used to lubricate the parts for, uh, for the nail gun. But anyway, uh, when he first tried using the nail gun, he got, as you can see, he first uh, did a lot of uh, a t a tr test runs. I guess first to, um, there's like a specific word I'm thinking of, like like temper the nail gun, like try to, I'd say calibrate. Oh, the correct word is break in. He's trying to break in the nail gun so that it works properly. And as he kept doing this, he started, he started seeing less occurrences of the double nail. Talking about more its, its performance, when he was nailing the shooting on the side of the uh, of the sunroom, he only encountered about, I mean, the, 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 the double nails only happened about three times. Out of this whole entire wall of nails, that's actually pretty good. But uh, still not, might not be ideal when you're a perfectionist like my dad. All right, so that's all for the review. Uh, again, this was an initial review and demonstration. I don't really feel comfortable of doing more demonstrations because my cat is hovering around me and my hands are a bit cold. So today I showed you uh, a, 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 my first impressions of using a nail gun. I said before that none of my people in my family have seen a nail gun before, but since I go to ESOMS or the Engineering Science University Magnet School, they we do use a lot of nail guns a lot of times when we're working in our wood shop. So that was kind of a, a, a lie. But uh, like I was saying before, um, these nail guns are very dangerous. You wanna be very careful when you're using them. Like my dad said, uh, they might be even more dangerous than actual guns. Um, of course, um, don't take that out of context. My dad is gonna show me how to use a gun um, and we're probably going to do a, a, a video on that. But like with everything, you should always take baby steps first. And not to say that this is a baby step, but I guess when my dad was teaching me, first he taught me how to build a coop before he worked on an actual house. And I guess for uh, learning how to use a gun, like first using BB gun, but then 
using this nail gun, which obviously is just as is just as if not more dangerous than an actual gun. They're, they're, and you have to follow a lot of the same uh, safety rules. For example, like you never put your fingers on the trigger. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, not to say that everyone should use guns, but people should learn how to use them just in case they need to defend themselves. Uh, Second Amendment. But anyway, I'm Ayman, and thanks for watching. Please like it, comment, subscribe, and look at our videos on I and Ayman, especially our, our tour review videos and our videos on converting our patio to a sunroof. So, uh, I hope I don't get demonetized for talking about guns in this video, but I will see you then. So, I'm Ayman, this is Burton, and signing out. Peace. Do you want to see the, the nail there?